It's my great pleasure to welcome you to Zidovia for the Horasis India Meeting 2019. It's the 11th edition of the Horasis India Meeting, and we are delighted to be in Zidovia, this famous city, uh, not only famous among students, uh, we have a world famous university here, IE University, being our host of this meeting. But looking back to a um, century old history, over the last centuries, building up Segovia here in the heartland of Spain, now welcoming Indian entrepreneurs, NIs, non resident Indians, and global citizens to celebrate India and to celebrate Indian contribution to global economic growth. Ladies and gentlemen, talking about India is always a delight for me because India is good news. We just had elections in India and uh, we had a, a new government coming in, actually the old government uh, being re-elected and India is looking forward to be uh, contributing to global economic growth and to be a good um, political support, uh, economic support, social support and India being a new engine of globalization. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next one and a half days, we will talk about India, we will talk about India's contribution to the world, but we will also talk about Spain, uh, our host country. Like India, Spain just had um, elections recently, a new government coming in, and uh, so we, we are at a very, very interesting time where two new governments are uh, taking over and uh, we will celebrate in both Spain and India. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is co-hosted by IE University, by the Confederation of Indian Industries, CI, and supported by many other organizations led by KPMG. Uh, they are um, hosting the award session tomorrow celebrating the Indian Business Leader of the Year, and by IMA, and uh, the PC Chamber of Commerce, uh, bringing also a lot of very important delegations to this Paratus India meeting. So again, uh, welcome to the meeting. Uh, I wish you very fruitful discussions, a uh, lot of good business, new connections, and many of you might uh, think it's so nice to be back to university and might uh, think it would be great to be young again and to be a student in such a wonderful place. So please welcome and uh, let's celebrate this Horatus India meeting. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Let me now call um, uh, the three speakers to the panel. Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador, uh, please join us on the panel. Mr. Tan Shreyama, Your Excellency. Um, TV Narendran, the CEO of Tata Steel, who is also leading um, CI as the incoming president and Salvador Camona, who is the rector of IE University. And uh, again, uh, Salvador, thank you so much for hosting us. And uh, the world is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Ambassador Brema, Chairman Pichte, uh, Chairman and CEO Narendra, uh, participants in this uh, uh, event, this wonderful event of uh, for us in India meeting. Welcome to IE University. At the university, we are delighted to have you here. Uh, the purposes of uh, the meeting uh, fit very well in the purposes of the university. In the sense that uh, the university is an international institution, just to give you a sense of that, 76 percent of our incoming students are international. Um, 53 percent of our of our students are female, and um, concerning faculty, 55 percent of our faculty is international. Full-time faculty is international. So this is an international event, and therefore we are delighted to have you here because this is going to endorse a little bit more our international position. At the same time, technology is one, is one of our main uh, aims. For example, we have the war rooms. The war rooms are called the window of the world, and the window of the world is uh, a wonderful classroom that allows us you know, to hold classes with people who are located in five different countries at the same time. Therefore, you know, because you are going to discuss and you are going to talk about technology and innovation, uh, we are delighted to have you here again also for this uh, purpose. The first thing is that uh, I University is an entrepreneurial institution. Uh, we have an incubator, 
we have uh, wonderful startup, startup over students are already unicorns. So we are delighted in the sense that we are talking about a new idea for business, and uh, therefore you might wish also, you know, to interact with our students that will be around during this coming days. And at the same time, humanity is also something very important for us. Uh, just to give you a sense of this, this building is now in this 800 year anniversary this year. We have uh, prepared a wonderful book. Uh, with respect to that, we have held a number of um, um, congresses and conferences uh, just to celebrate the 800th anniversary of uh, this building. A wonderful building, as you can see, this is a Gothic uh, style that is built on uh, the remains of a um, Romanic, uh, Romanic uh, church that you can see close to the architecture, uh, architecture um, um, room. Uh, this is a new institution, but uh, we aim to not just to be a teaching institution. We want to be a knowledge generation institution, and therefore we put a huge amount of resources in research for our faculty members to generate knowledge and to teach our students the mode of learning of the next generation. Therefore, um, we have these five elements that are crucial for our aims and scope. And, um, and I think it did fit very well, you know, also in the aims of uh, the other system we are meeting. Uh, the institution is a young one, but uh, just let me tell you that uh, uh, we have been ranked number 24 in the world in the index of employability. Uh, therefore, you know, although we have some health, some very good results, although, you know, we are international and we are, you know, working very hard in terms of technology and humanities and so forth, you know, this is like, uh, you know, what happened with Alice in Wonderland. And you know that, uh, you know, when Alice was, uh, was talking with the Red Queen, you know, she was told, Alice, you have to do all the running that you have that you can to stay in the same place. So with meetings like this, we thought we would learn from people like yourself, okay, we expect, you know, to stay in the same place. So uh, welcome to all of you. I expect that the meeting will be uh, socially rewarding and intellectually challenging for all of you. Many thanks. I think you put the right words. Intellectually challenging. There's a lot of interesting discussions waiting for you. Let me now call on um, the leader of the Indian delegation of PI, P.V. Narendran, who is also the CEO and mentioned that of uh, Tadaski. Please welcome P.V. Narendran. Thanks, uh, Frank. Uh, Ambassador Verma, Mr. Samarana, Frank. On behalf of the Confederation of uh, Indian Industry, it's my privilege to welcome all of you to the Horasis uh, Global India Business Meeting here in Segovia today. So, welcome to all of you, and uh, really delighted that all of you could be here with us today. CI is delighted to be co hosting this 11th uh, edition together with Horasis and IE University. And thank congratulations that this 11th consecutive edi uh, edition is proof of your sustained hard work and uh, delivering a quality meeting year after year. We are delighted to be in Sargovia this time after last year's excellent 10th edition in picturesque Malaga. I can't say I was there, but I presume it must have been great. And India's relations with Spain has been steadily expanding, both politically and economically, and has been sustained by high-level visits in recent years. Trade and investment have been increasing at a good pace. Spain is India's 37th largest trading partner, with total trade amounting to about $5.86 billion in 2018-19 and it is the 15th largest investor in India, the 7th largest from Europe. So this suggests that there is certainly a lot more that India and Spain can do together. There is obviously a huge potential to further expand economic ties, and that's why meetings like these are significant as they are an expression of interest in each other's economy. With Spain, there are several sectors where the expansion can happen, such as IS, ICT, biotechnology, environmental technology, automobile, infrastructure, particularly smart cities, railway, renewable energy, tourism, defense, and aerospace. We have with us a senior level CEO delegation from a cross sectoral group of companies, and we hope our members will engage with their Spanish counterparts to identify specific areas for forging new business partnerships. I take this opportunity on behalf of the Indian industry to invite our Spanish counterparts, particularly in this region of Spain, to explore the opportunities that various new initiatives and campaigns are throwing up and to do business with India in several new areas. 
It is also an honor for me to welcome some of the global business leaders and eminent thinkers who are here today with us to discuss and debate issues arising from the evolving global context as well as India's development priorities. Ladies and gentlemen, we are meeting here at Horizons at a time when India has just successfully completed the world's largest democratic exercise. We feel that the decisive election results will propel India's growth to the next level and drive the transformation of the country. A focused and comprehensive agenda for addressing corruption has delivered outstanding results in the last five years. Game-changing reforms such as introduction of the Goods and Services Tax, GST, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, which has also been uh, very significant, lowering of tax rates for small enterprises, improving the ease of doing business, and FDI reforms, so on and so forth, have created the right environment for industry to flourish. The government has taken up the ease of doing business very strongly over the last few years and has achieved a phenomenal jump in the world ranking. Uh, it has had a jump of 53 places in the last two years to the 77th rank. State governments, too, have been proactively setting up single window clearance systems and time bound administrative procedures, and we have with us representatives from state governments as well. And across the country, the investment and the business climate has potential to improve and has already improved notably. In addition, notable policies for improving the intellectual property regime, creation of new investment vehicles, and others have been instituted. Spectacular achievements such as the Jandan Yojana, distribution of gas cylinders, complete electrification of all villages, construction of 15 million houses, quick progress in roads and highways, and many others clearly show the dedicated commitment of the government to the rapid development and scale and the efficiency of its work. Indian industry believes that India's potential for growth is much higher than the 7 to 7.5% level uh, that has been forecasted for 2019-20. A stronger push for reforms, both structural and sectoral, will help achieve this potential by enhancing the competitiveness of Indian industry and the Indian economy. The first 100 days of the new government would be an opportunity to set the direction and pace of the reform agenda for the country for the next five years. According to CII, the government should focus on developing industrial corridors and sector-specific industrial parks through public-private partnerships. A focus on certain sectors and technologies enabled industrialization with shared digital facilities will certainly boost manufacturing. In the infrastructure sector, public-private partnerships need to be strengthened and delayed projects and delayed payments to project contractors must be addressed. In this context, the themes to be discussed around India's economy and leveraging the opportunities therein, India's pain economic relations, India's role in the global economy, along with the sectoral discussions, are very timely and appropriate. The CII delegation is looking forward to fruitful discussions and deliberations around these themes. We also look forward to gaining new insights on global trends as well as those related to STEM. Let me conclude by once again welcoming the high level international community gathered here today and invite you to do business with India. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, uh, Narendra. And I think that it's a great partnership between Horatis and CI over the years, and uh, we are very grateful to it. Let me now call on His Excellency, Ambassador Verna, who will speak and welcome you on behalf of the Government of India. Mr. Ambassador, Your Excellency. Thank you, Frank. Director, I our guest from India, Mr. Narendra. Thank you, thank you. Very nice car, Ola, honored to be us. A warm welcome to the European Union, to Spain, and particularly to Segovia. It's a heritage city, and I think uh, the building is a big clue enough that we are in heritage territory. If you're an Indian these days, before you accept any speaking slot or appointment, you first check whether India is in the game and that is not. Today, India is not in the game, so you know, generally the focus is high, people are here. I made this huge mistake yesterday. India is playing Afghanistan. They don't even trick it. I'm just sort of getting their attention back in case it's just it. So I accepted this invitation in Barcelona yesterday. Yesterday, the Indian textile machine we make in manufacturing creation from the big event. So I said, India, Afghanistan, take walk. I can miss that game. Huge mistake. <laughs> but we won in the end. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spain. Uh, 
arrangements uh, giving you the lowdown, there's, uh, there's a problem when we speak loud, there's nothing left to talk about. So let me take a very lofty, perchy, words of view of uh, everything here. Uh, it's fantastic to be here in this uh, building which is 800 years old, which uh, reminds us that we are dealing with uh, titans, uh, we are dealing with uh, uh, powers which have played a very significant role in human history. Spain, as you will recollect, was uh, perhaps one of the most powerful empires ever in human history. But the Indians weren't far too behind in terms of scale. We didn't sort of venture out, but uh, in the 18th century, 23% uh, of global GDP was attributed to India. And uh, we believe that we are soon inching towards that in the 21st century. The times in India are changing. Uh, it's a great space to be in. And the representatives from India, as I see through the invitation list and the panel list, across the different uh, sessions is uh, uh, very well chosen. You have uh, people from the government, uh, from political parties, which are in the ruling coalition or not in the ruling coalition, journalists, turned politicians, uh, entrepreneurs, professionals. Uh, uh, so all in all, it's backed by the, the, the knowledge base of KPMG, IE, CII. So we have all the ingredients which take which are required for a meaningful exchange of ideas. Uh, and this is a very important juncture in Indian contemporary history. And here I'm tempted to go back uh, to a reference to Game of Thrones. Let us catch your attention again. Uh, in in game, game of Thrones, uh, I mean, there's a cottage industry emerging now. How do you analyze Game of Thrones to real life? And there are several ways you can do it. And, uh, one particular reference I would like to make is uh, in one of the last episodes, uh, Tyrion asked this very significant question. He said, What is the most powerful thing? Is it war? Is it gold? Is it the flag? You know, well, Game of Thrones is about a larger, I mean, you need, there is a larger message. So Tyrion's question is very important. What is more important? Is it the mercantile values, gold? Is it uh, uh, patriotism, flag? Or is it uh, sheer marital, martial, martial values, war? So, if you're a constructivist, you see it uh, one way. If you see it, if you're a realist, you see the other way. To cut it short, Tyrion says uh, the greatest uh, thing, or the most powerful thing in the world, is a good story. A good narrative. And what is happening in India today as we speak is a narrative stage. Uh, the government in power, the forces which have come together are trying to create in India a narrative which, while taking several aspects from Indian history, are also energizing or infusing the Indian industry, the common man the Indian Inc. combination to much higher aspirations. So, good narrative. And I hope that this conversation across the next two days will add to the narrative. Uh, before I conclude, very briefly on India's Spain relations uh, being touched uh, upon, uh, Spain, which was fixated nationally towards Latin America and Europe, in the last few years, has made a conscious effort to look at Asia, the strategic, strategic vision uh, for Asia from 2018 to 2022. Places China, India, Korea, and Japan are significant Asian partners with which Spain will engage consciously and with targets in mind. And that is happening. Uh, India and Spain recently, a couple of years back, celebrated 60 years of diplomatic relations. 2017, we had Prime Minister Modi visit. Spain. Uh, this year we are hoping for a high level visit, a VVIP visit from Spain to India. Our foreign ministers have met five times in the last nine months or so. Our commerce ministers met uh, on the margins of the G20 in Japan earlier this month. There is engagement. Uh, about a quarter million Indians and Spaniards travel to each other's country every year. You've only heard the three figures, $6 billion plus. 
bilateral investment above four billion dollars, uh, about two hundred Spanish companies in India, about fifty Indian companies uh, uh, in Spain. Uh, Indian students as uh, one of the rising Indian exports to Spain. I think we should uh, we should calculate how much foreign exchange we contribute to Spain to our Indian students. Uh, so there is excitement, uh, but more needs to be done. I think uh, Spanish businesses are looking at India, but uh, the sky is the limit. Uh, Indian businesses too have to uh, have to engage and gathering like this. I hope there will be balance of Spaniards and Indians in this. So I did get a sense that there may be more Indians in the programming. Uh, I think greater value would would would, would, would emerge if, uh, if the or if the dissemination of the uh, discussions. Uh, are shared with a much larger audience. I conclude my remarks. I'm very happy to be here and I look forward to participating uh, in some of the panel discussions. And uh, have a very good stay here. Uh, it's not very hot, it's pleasant uh, to make most of the town uh, outside the panel sessions. And I thank the organizers for inviting me here this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador, your Excellency, and uh, you said it, there's a lot of engagement uh, between India and Spain, but also between India and the world. And I think India uh, has more and more important role to play in the world in the multilateral context, but also the bilateral context with countries like Spain, European Union, and the whole world. We are now um, progressing and advancing the program with the uh, traditional welcome ceremony, what we call the uh, ribbon cutting, actually the virtual ribbon cutting. So we'd like to call on, besides the three eminent speakers on the stage, also on the representatives from IMAM, from the uh, PC Center of Commerce, from uh, KPMC, but also on the two ministers uh, being here, the two ministers from eminent states, from Punjab Minister Sodi, and also from Maharashtra, Minister Hordia to join us on the stage. Please join us on the stage for the written card. Please. 